up guys it is the turtle girl welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel today you might notice in the background there's a little something different you can actually see hoku's basking area and that's just kind of a joke because for some reason i'm always getting comments when i had this old diy basking platform everyone was always commenting hey does your turtle have a basking area where's your basking area you do know that turtles need a basking area to get dry right and so to all you kind commenters now you can actually see his basking area this is a new one that i got thank you to chewy for sending that over um by the way if you want to see what that's all about make sure you check out my instagram and also i'm just posting a ton of cool photos i've been more active on there lately um it's just at the turtle girl so hit me up on instagram but all plugs aside today we are talking about budget turtle keeping now this is a really fun topic for me because personally i have a lot of experience with budget turtle keeping given that I'm a teenager who's still going to school and so I don't have a job to really pay for my pets so I am on a strict budget and I know my parents do make me pay for my own animals basically everything comes from my own budget and the own money that I've saved up um, and understandably because this is my hobby and so I want to be invested in it and I am the one responsible for them and so naturally I get to deal with the expenses that come along with owning a pet um, and so, before we get into this, I just want to let you guys know, in case you didn't, newsflash, owning pets is not cheap, you will incur expenses, um, and so there are little ways you can save money here and there, but in the end, it's always better to invest in things for the long term and know that you're investing in your turtle or pet's welfare. I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video as well, so let's just get on with it. The first tip I will give you is be aware of the differences between buying online and in store and also just in general. Be comparing prices from different stores, be they online or in store and just try to find the best deal. So first of all, with online and in-store, there can be differences um, between buying from those two places. For instance, this AquaClear 70 that I bought here, this was, I think it was like $50 on Amazon, but I believe at PetSmart and Petco in-store, it can be um, more expensive. I actually don't know, I should probably go check that. I'm just gonna call them and let's go find out. Oh, hello people. All right, so we're gonna call them and figure out how much this thing is gonna cost. Thank you for calling PetSmart. Thanks for calling PetSmart. How may I help you? Hi, I was wondering if you guys had the AquaClear 70 in stock and how much it costs, the filter? Oh, so you're looking for the Fluval 70? Yes, and that would be a power yeah, I filter, I believe. Of them in stock right now. Awesome, and what is the price on those? $59.99. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, no problem. $60, $59.99 at Petco, or PetSmart. Let's see how much it is at Petco. This is just lovely waiting music. Good afternoon, Petco. I can help you today. Hi, I was wondering if you guys had the AquaClear 70 filters in stock and how much those are. AquaClear? Yes, or maybe Fluval, under Fluval. Oh, that's right. I, you know, I always forget that they're the same thing. Oh, the actual filter is, I'm sorry, fifty four ninety nine. Awesome, thank you. That's what I need to know. <laughs> sorry about the misunderstanding there. It's all good. So there you have it. It is $5 more expensive at Petco, and it's $10 more expensive from PetSmart if you buy it in the store. And so just to recap what we just found by calling around and checking my local pet stores, um, is that at PetSmart, the AquaClear 70 was $60, whereas at Petco, it was only $55. Now, maybe that wasn't such a great example of the difference between online and in-store pricing because the AquaClear online, you can buy it for about $50, but you still might have to pay shipping, and that's only a $10 difference, so maybe not that big. But for other things, there is quite a big difference between buying online or in-store. So, for instance, the other day, I was going to Petco to pick up some bloodworms for my axolotl, and I noticed that one of the aquarium decorations that I saw there. It was this big log. It kind of looked like this up here, I think is what it was. And it was like, I don't know, 30 or $40 or something. And that's pretty pricey for just one decoration. And so I found something similar online that kind of looks like this. 
and it was less expensive and it's almost like the same thing and also especially for things like decorations just go out into nature take a hike and get some wood from a stream or get some rocks from a stream and make sure of course that it's an okay thing to do that because some places you're not supposed to take stuff from the wild but as long as you're sanitizing that and that it's okay to do that those are free to use and they look more natural anyways um and so those are just little ways to save money. Just price check and compare to see where you can find the best deal. But anyways, back to the other video. So as you saw there, there is actually a difference between online and in-store prices. Maybe it might not be that big of a deal to you, but if you are looking to save a little bit of money, that is something to keep in mind. Now, another thing you can do is use the classifieds and craigslist to your advantage there is a lot of things that you can find on there now as always you need to practice internet safety and just common sense when buying things off of craigslist so for instance use tanks make sure that they're obviously not cracked check the seams of the tank and check that there's no cracks in the silicone and that the tank doesn't leak if possible maybe see it full of water before you actually buy it and the same thing goes for equipment make sure that you can see it either running and if it doesn't work when you get home well that's your own fault for not checking it and just use common sense but again something i want to add is that you do have to prioritize where you want to spend your money so for things especially like equipment such as filters heaters and lighting those are areas where you kind of just want to make an investment in that area because if you buy a filter and it breaks a week later and maybe you spend 20 bucks on it on Craigslist, well, you're just going to have to buy another one. And so is it really worth it to save that little bit of extra to continually have to purchase more filters? No, it doesn't really make sense. So just buy the brand new one in the beginning and know that you're just making this investment and you want your piece of equipment to last long. Now, you can find new inbox type of things over on Craigslist as well, but you just have to be careful and evaluate where it is good to spend your money and where it's okay to kind of cheap out a little bit and maybe not spend as much but just use your common sense and if you don't feel good about buying something on craigslist it's okay to walk away and just say hey you know what i don't think this is exactly what i was looking for the next thing i want to talk about as far as budget turtle keeping is do it yourself now do it yourself is not actually always the best way to save money because in the end if you end up buying all the different parts and components to do your do-it-yourself plus the time you spend it might not be worth it so you have to evaluate yourself and say hey do I have the skill set to do this do I have the free time to do this and do I really want to attempt this and will it work if I do it myself so for instance something like a basking area basking areas can be pretty expensive whether online or in store like usually you can't find them for under twenty dollars whereas this diy basking area was maybe five dollars for me to make because it's literally just a plastic bin some zip ties and then like coat hanger wire coat hanger things um, and so this is a very basic skill set you do not need to be a craftsman to make this it's super easy but for something like a diy filter or something that's a little more intensive as far as work and actually making it functional you just have to see is my time and if is my time and effort worth the money i would pay um if i just bought it brand new and so diying something you really need to think about beforehand um personally for me i know that if it's not simple like this then i could probably mess it up so i just stick to buying most of my things but if you're that type of person who's handy with tools then go for it but just make sure what you're doing is safe and that'll actually work so those are my thoughts on diy my final budget keeping tip for you all is look for alternatives for things you are using and that you would usually buy at a pet store and so the biggest example i have for this is substrates so for instance you can buy sand at pet smart that's 25 pounds of sand for twenty dollars or you could go to your hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot and get a 50 pound bag of play sand for, it's like 
five to eight dollars somewhere in that range or even the black diamond blasting sand that's black sand that i have from tractor supply that was eight dollars for a 50 pound bag and it actually looks really great and so look for alternatives like my tile in my axolotl tank that was maybe i spent four dollars for those two pieces of tile and that's substrate for my entire tank and i don't have to spend a lot of money and so just look for alternatives that you can use and just be resourceful. So those are my tips for budget turtle keeping. I know that I tend to be kind of frugal just because I have to be and it, it's not a bad thing um, but just make sure that you are spending your money in the right places and knowing that you're making investments in your turtles welfare. Um, so that is what I have to say on that topic. If you feel so inclined to help me out with my animals and with the expenses that go along with keeping them feel free to check out my patreon that also supports the youtube channel so i can continue making videos like this for you guys but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did if you did i don't know if that's even a word if you did feel free to drop a thumbs up on your way out ring that notification bell so you can watch all my future videos and i will see you guys next week have a totally awesome day Bye.